Well, YouTube, I have a treat for you. If you've been a subscriber to my channel, you know that I've had a 2016 Colorado Z71 LWN diesel, a 2020 Silverado LTZ LM2 diesel, and a 2023 Silverado High Country LZ0. I've also had several other diesels, a Cruze and an Equinox diesel, but I've always been a fan of the 2.7 L3B four-cylinder turbo that GM has been using in the Silverado for some time. I have always wanted to compare between a modern diesel and a modern gas turbo engine. Now that you're able to get the 2.7 L3B engine in the Colorado, I decided it was time to put it to the test. The 2016 Colorado Z71 diesel was very maneuverable and capable little truck. But I've said in the past that it's a good for towing this particular setup on relatively flat land. I wouldn't take it to the Rockies, thus the reason for the larger trucks. My channel is dedicated to giving you the extra information that you won't find on traditional review channels. I love data and I'm hoping you appreciate what I have to offer. Now let's get into the details. Looking at the towing capacity of the 2023 Colorado, there's only one engine and one axle choice for the Z71 trucks. Mine does not have the high output tune yet, but the max gross combined weight rating is 13,250 pounds and the max trailer weight rating is 7,700 pounds. You can see that the gross vehicle weight rating is 6,250 pounds. The front axle weight rating is 3,500 pounds and the rear axle weight rating is 3,600 pounds. The maximum cargo carrying capacity is 1,366 pounds. Taking the truck to a local CAT scale, it weighs in at 5,000 pounds. This includes the driver and a whole bunch of stuff in the rear seat. The front axle load is 2,700 pounds and the rear axle load is 2,300 pounds without the trailer attached. When we add the Cougar 27RES to the equation, the steering axle drops to 2,640 pounds and the rear axle goes up to 3,280 pounds. The trailer axles are sitting at 6,580 pounds for a total gross combined weight of 12,500 pounds. For all the towing that I do, I have a spreadsheet that shows if we are following the manufacturer's requirements. You can see that we have 330 pounds available on the truck, so we can add additional cargo or passengers to the vehicle. The front axle has 860 pounds available. The rear axle has 320 pounds available. When we look at the gross combined vehicle weight rating, we have 750 pounds available. The tongue weight is setting at 920 pounds. So many numbers. Long story short, we can add 330 pounds to the truck and an additional 200 pounds to the trailer before we reach the manufacturer's limits for this particular setup. If you like percentages, you will see that we are at 91.1% of the rear axle load rating and 94.7% of the gross combined weight rating. All the other numbers look good, even though we are sitting at 7,500 pounds out of the maximum of 7,700 pounds that this truck is capable of towing. One other thing that I always look at is the rise or drop at the wheel wells. The front of this truck rose up 0.1 inches or 2.5 millimeters for our friends outside of the US and the rear dropped 1.85 inches or almost 47 millimeters. My goal is to keep the load on the front axle as close to the original as possible to keep steering feel the same. The owner's manual for some vehicles state that it should be one half the distance between the trailer with no weight distribution and adding the di weight distribution back onto the truck. If you have oversized bars, that could end up causing an issue, but my theory is I like it to be back to the original height if possible. The towing loop is the same that I did with the 2020 Silverado LTZ LM2. I'll put a card up in the video here if you guys want to watch that one. The loop takes me from the Meyer Express gas station just east of Flint, Michigan. It's actually in Davison. 
out east towards Port Huron. I turn around in Kimball Township and head back. Overall, the loop on a good day should take about an hour and a half and covers right at 103 miles. The longer you tow, the more accurate that your data will be. Here you see the start and end locations. And this is the turnaround point. The weather conditions for April 14th can be seen here. At 2 p.m., we had winds out of the northwest around 15 miles per hour, gusting to over 20 miles per hour. You can also see the conditions really didn't improve during the loop. We start out the data collection here at the fuel pump. I use the same 30 second single click method that others use to try to lower the variability in testing. I am doing the towing loop with the recommended 87 octane fuel. Now, one last thing. I have the Banks i data monster and I collect data from both of my trucks all the time. This video, you will get to see the engine temperature, transmission temperature, date, time, GPS location, GPS speed, manifold absolute density, truck speed, transmission gear, engine RPM, and calculated engine torque. One very cool thing is the manifold absolute density, MAD for short. You will see before the truck is started that we have between 80 and 81% of ideal density, even though I'm sitting around 800 feet in elevation. If you want to know more about this, please leave a comment below. Now let's get rolling. So you can see here that the engine RPM and the amount of torque that the engine's putting out and the gear, everything's changing. The accuracy of the mile per an hour gauge, I believe, is actually a lot better because you're getting more updates per a second. This data is being logged at 10 samples per a second, whereas the GPS speed is typically delayed. Something like once per a second is the best that you're going to be getting an update from it. So you'll see here, we're getting ready to get onto the freeway and I'm not trying to go, you know, full throttle to get up to speed as quickly as possible. This little truck will actually burn the tires off even with the 920 pounds that we have of tongue weight on the vehicle. So I'm gonna let you go ahead and listen to this and see what you think. and we're already up to 65 miles an hour. We are running in tow haul mode, and tow haul mode does a couple of things. It does change the RPM that the transmission will shift at. It also locks out eighth gear. You're never able to get into eighth gear while you're in tow haul mode. The other thing that it does is, of course, cut off the auto start stop, which is something that you really don't want if you're towing anyways. You come up to a, a light, you don't want the engine shutting down, especially if you've been towing hard. That way all of the fluids and stuff continue to pump and the turbo is able to stay cooled down. You notice in sixth gear, we're just under 2,500 RPMs. And we do have a little bit of a tailwind as we head east here out of Davison, Michigan. that turbo whistle a little bit and we just shifted into seventh gear I do have this entire loop recorded but 
it's only about six minutes of real time and then the rest of it is all accelerated. Again, a little bit of turbo there. Got down to 64 miles per hour. Back up to 65, minor issue with the uh, Suburban in front of me. And here I actually lost my camera for a second, but we're right back again. You'll notice here that we're getting up fairly high in the overall torque range for this engine. Good news is peak is at 2000 RPMs, which works out really well. There is a tiny bit of spark knock that happens in the engine, of course, so there's gonna be some timing retard. You can hear it right there, retarding at the timing. Thinking about possibly doing another tow test running premium, you don't get additional torque, but it is something that I could do. The next thing I want to show you guys is kind of the view from my position. So here I've got those clamp on tow mirrors. I actually like those because if you're not going to be towing a whole lot, basically you can take them off and you get all the fuel economy that you would normally have. You can see there the Banks I Dash Beta Monster, and you can see the Ram pickup truck coming up on me on the left there. And I am running without the camera on it because I haven't got the update for the automatic emergency braking. That's something that still has to be done. And if you guys have any questions, if you want any additional information, please leave a comment. Uh, if you don't mind, subscribe to the channel. It really does help out. And I'll talk to you guys as soon as we get back to the uh, Express gas station.
So we made it back to the gas station, and it turns out we have the exact same pump, which is great. Uh, went ahead, filled up the truck here, and I'm gonna speed this up a little bit too. You'll notice that I accidentally put 93 octane in it after the end of the tow loop. Wasn't really intentional, but the button was already pushed and I was recording, so that's what we get. So we're gonna go ahead and speed this up real quick. There we go. The first click, we'll wait 30 seconds. Got 10.871 gallons of fuel. And we ended up at 10.895 gallons of fuel for that loop. So in conclusion, 103 miles divided by 10.895 US gallons gives you 9.45 miles per gallon at 65 miles an hour, or for our Canadian friends, 24.89 liters per 100 kilometers at 105 kilometers per an hour. Overall, I have to say the truck did really, really well. It does get pushed a little bit because there is a mass difference between the truck itself and the trailer. We are towing at the upper limit of the Colorado. Not to say that I wouldn't do it in longer distances. I would. It has tons of power. Fuel economy is okay. I wouldn't say it's great. That little engine can suck down fuel when you're actually putting down some ponies. So anyways, thanks for watching and I hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know uh, if you guys want to see anything else. I do have a few other things that have been recorded and if you guys have stayed all the way to the end, I do have a zero to 60 that has been recorded towing the 7,500 pounds. Let me know if you guys are interested in seeing something like that. Goodbye for now.